the exciting thing about all that was, apart from the amount of noise, which is good, it's good noise, sorry for those that are joining online, you have to do it with people um, around, is that it's actually not that hard. Some of us find it easier than others. My kids get embarrassed because I have no problems talking to anybody. Um, but having a reminder that even something like, you know, the weather, you can always talk about weather in Auckland because in half an hour later it's going to be different anyway. So um, there, it's important to be able to talk to people, whether you're younger or older. It's exciting. But we want to go a little bit deeper than just talk about the weather or just talk about, you know, your football team losing again, if you're like me, they always lose. Um, there are other important things, including why we gather together. And there are some guests here this morning. It's always easy to, um, to say hello to somebody that's new, but to take that extra step and go a little bit further, maybe have them around for lunch or, or pop across the road um, and have something. So that's exciting. Our young people are going to be going to their programs now. So um, let me just pray for them before they go. Lord, I pray that uh, for those that have given of their time to lead, Pray you'll bless them and encourage them as they share with our young people. Um, and may the young ones learn more about you and be drawn closer into you and into relationship with each other um, in part of this part of your family here at Eastview. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So they can go now. Okay. Whew. Suddenly we're half full, which is good. Not that we're half full, that we've got a number of people going out. So, Morena, um, today we're going to return to our series on this like ultimate treasure hunt that I've been talking about. And I want to continue what we did earlier, um, what we've just done, by asking you some questions. I like questions, so I'm going to ask you some questions Turn this on. These are, um, oh, these are the questions. Went too fast. That's okay. These are the questions that I want us to look at this morning. Here we go. I'll read them out. Hopefully you can see them. Which of the Gospels could actually be part one of a two-part story? I've actually told you this answer before, so I'm making sure you all know it. Which book is therefore part two of that? Today we celebrate Pentecost. What was Pentecost first called? And uh, when do people celebrate Pentecost? And what are at least three different names or titles for the Holy Spirit? And Pentecost is the fulfillment of two prophecies or statements. Where in the Bible do we find these prophecies or statements? Okay, those are the questions. Who knows all the answers? Actually, I think some of you do. So, first off, let's go. Which of the Gospels could actually be part one? Ah, someone knows it, Luke. And therefore, what is part two? Acts. Oh, we're doing well. See, I don't need to do anything. Today, we celebrate Pentecost. And what was Pentecost first called? Hehehe. <laughs> Good. I'm, so, ooh, somebody might not. Uh, look, I'll, I'll be honest. I like commentaries because they give me answers. Um, it was originally not called Pentecost. It was called the Festival of the New Grain. Okay? So that was where, because this happened, the Festival of the New Grain was celebrated, and it was celebrated, so the next question, it was celebrated seven weeks or 50 days after Passover, which is today, seven weeks or 50 days after Passover. And then um, the next question was at least three names or titles for the Holy Spirit. Come on, call some out. Comforter, Comforter great. Yep. Yep. Oh, you guys... Look at this. We've got the scholar over here. I'll just sit down. Peter, take over. Okay, um, 
There's lots of them. Advocate, guide, indweller, revealer, spirit of truth, um, of, or the spirit of God, spirit of the Lord, spirit of Christ, teacher, witness, a, a witness, and you may come up with um, a number of others. And the last one, last one, let's see if people know this one. Just making sure I've got the passage I want here. Okay. Someone called it out. Joel, well done. Joel 2, 28 to 32. And where's the other bit? (laughs) How about in Acts 1? Acts 1. See, information, like we've just got some answers to some of these questions, information is important. And it can help things come alive when it's in context. For example, we see the Holy Spirit in Acts 2, which we're going to look at in a moment. Um, But it follows, obviously, Acts 1, where the risen Jesus introduces this idea of of the Holy Spirit coming. It says, um, once he was eating with them, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised. As I told you before, John baptized with water, but in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Luke, so that's in um, Acts, we just looked at, Acts 2 and Acts 1. In Luke 2, we have the coming birth of Jesus which follows the introduction of this idea in Luke 1. Let me, let me say that again, because it could be a little, I confuse people a little bit. So we have in Acts 2, we see the coming of, of the Holy Spirit. And in Acts 1, we have Jesus telling us about the coming of the Holy Spirit. In Luke 2, we have the coming of Jesus as the baby. And in Luke 1, we have an introduction about the coming of Jesus. Luke and Acts are like book 1 and book 2 written by the same person. It's interesting how those two sort of things mirror each other. In in Acts 1, we read um, Jesus tells um, his disciples... But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon me, and you will, uh, sorry, comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Then you do see Peter preach to this thing in Acts 2. Firstly, he is in Jerusalem. And Jews from all over the known world at that time had come to celebrate this, um, this feast, what we now call Pentecost. And it is a fulfillment of that that Jesus had said in Acts 1. So we have in Acts 1, we have a fulfillment in Acts 2. Just like in Luke, we had and introduction and a fulfillment in Luke 2. These mirror things are happening. It's a fulfillment in Acts 2, but it's not the complete fulfillment. This is this weird thing that we have in the Bible sometimes and with God, that sometimes you get an answer to something But there's another answer that follows on, and maybe even another one that follows on after that. So what we have is we have these answers, but these fulfillments that will continue. So it's like now, but not completed yet. Now this morning, as you can see, we are going to have communion. But I'm going to do something very different for some this morning you're not going to have me stand up and talk for minutes and minutes and minutes. Some of you are going, yes. Some of you might, oh, I love someone over here. Have to buy them something later. Notice my kids didn't say anything. (laughs) Anyway, um, what I want us to do 
is, you know, so often, well, this is my opinion. You can disagree. So often, we come to church, someone reads part of a few verses sometimes, and then tries to unpack it, which is good. And um, that's really helpful. But sometimes, and I know confession time, I have probably done it, is I spend too much time on trying to unpack it and explain things that I don't spend enough time actually listening to what God's word is. So I have here another thing. I have here scrap paper. And I have some pens. Um, And I'm not going to give them to you now. But uh, what I am going to do is I am going to read a fairly decent chunk of Scripture this morning. And um, what I want us to do is just listen to the words. Don't listen to me. Listen to the words that God wants to say to you. Then after I have um, done the reading, we're going to hand out the scrap paper. If you want a pen, you can use it. You do not need the paper or the pen. That's up to you. Um, And then we're going to have a couple of minutes of silence. Uh, In that time, if you want to write something on the paper, if you want to draw, draw something, or if you want to reflect on what you have heard and write some notes, I want you to do that. It is not a test. I am not collecting it. Um, This is just for you to see what God is saying to you as individuals, to you as a family, and to us as a family. Okay? Because as I said, now and not yet, the Holy Spirit, when we celebrate Pentecost, was 2,000 years ago. But the Holy Spirit, Spirit is still present and speaking and doing amazing things today. May not be exactly what what happened 2,000 years ago, but God's God can do whatever he wants. While you are listening, I've just given you a couple of things maybe to for you to think of as well. Why was the Holy Spirit sent? What was the outcome of the Holy Spirit's action? And what is God saying, like I said, what is God saying to you, to Eastview, through Acts 2? So you can read along if you want, or you can just sit and listen. Um, I'm reading from the New Living Translation in case It's different to what you are looking at. So, let me read. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like a roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then, what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit, and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running, and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be? They exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee. And yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages. Here we are, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, the province of Asia, I always pronounce these words wrong, Pamphylia, Egypt, and areas of Libya around Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, and we all hear these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. They stood there amazed and perplexed. What can this mean? 
they ask each other. But others in the crowd ridiculed them, saying, they're just drunk, that's all. Then Peter stepped forward with the 11 other apostles and shouted to the crowd, listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem, make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk, as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all peoples. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy, and I will cause wonders in heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before the great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. People of Israel, listen. God publicly endorsed Jesus the Nazarene by doing powerful miracles, wonders and signs through him, as well you know. But God knew what would happen and his prearranged plan was carried out when Jesus was betrayed with the help of lawless Gentiles. You nailed him to a cross and killed him. But God released him from the horrors of death and raised him back to life. For death could not keep, its, keep him in its grip. King David said this about him. I see the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken for he is right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad and my tongue shouts his praises. My body rests in hope. For you will not leave my soul among the dead or allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. You have shown me the way of life and you will fill me with the joy of your presence. Dear brothers and sisters, think about this. You can be sure that the patriarch David wasn't referring to himself. For he died and was buried and his tomb is still here among us. But he was a prophet, and he knew God had promised with an oath that one of David's own descendants would sit on his throne. David was looking into the future and speaking of the Messiah's resurrection. He was saying that God would not leave him among the dead or allow his body to rot in the grave. God raised Jesus from the dead, and we are all witnesses of this. Now he is exalted to the place of highest honor in heaven at God's right hand. And the Father, (coughs) pardon me, and the Father, as he had promised, gave him the Holy Spirit to pour out upon us, just as you see and hear today. For David himself never ascended into heaven. Yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, sit in the place of honor at my right hand until I humble your enemies, making them a footstool under your feet. So let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, to be both Lord and Messiah. Peter's words pierced their hearts, and they said to him and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you, to your children, and to those far away. All who have been called by the Lord our God Then Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging all his listeners, save yourselves from this crooked generation. Those who believed what Peter 
said were baptized and added to the church that day about 3,000 in all. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshipped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Why was the Holy Spirit sent What was the outcome of the Holy Spirit's action? What is God saying? What did God say, even through listening to those words, um, to you and to us as Eastview? I I had a few questions at the start of the series. Next week, we'll finish um, the who, what, when, where, why, how of this treasure hunt. And... Today, um, ironically, it was meant to be, when do we start? When do we start? God is already working. We have the opportunity to partner with God now. God is speaking and he may have already. So, like I said before, please come and see me if you believe God has given you something, if you want, or maybe that's just something you need to process over. Also, feel free, um, as we have a couple of songs to close, feel free to um, turn to someone around you, ask them to pray with you, or come afterwards, or during, even during the songs around here, people will want to pray for you as well. Our God is alive and active. Um, and it's, it's a good day. Let me pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you that your word is alive. Thank you, Jesus, that you being the word died and rose again. Thank you, Holy Spirit that you are drawing us, pointing us to Christ, that you are active in the world around us. May we hear your voice. May we offer up our words of praise and adoration to you this morning. Amen.